Good morning. We're glad you've joined us for the Sunday morning service of Tusculum Hills Baptist Church, a caring and vibrant church that offers God's help to all people. We invite you to join us now for a special message from God's Word from Pastor Paul Gunn. It's good to be with you today. Turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 6, starting with verse 4. I'm getting so much from this study in Hebrews that uh, sometimes you wonder if a, if a series is going too long or maybe you need to speed it up or skip a few verses or chapters, but I just haven't felt that I could do that uh, and do justice to the Scripture here. There's just so much to know. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 through 8 to start with. The Bible says, It is impossible for those who have been once enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance because to their loss... They are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. Well, hard words there in the Scripture, and we've got a lot of hard words in the Scripture, don't we? We could study this Scripture, we could debate it several different ways, and on the surface, if we isolate this Scripture from the rest of the Bible... Uh, we could say that this scripture indicates that a person can lose his salvation. However, we must take into account the many other scriptures, like one that Sue read, that uh, God's salvation through Jesus Christ is unconditional and it is permanent. Now, I've preached about this assurance of salvation, this doctrine of eternal security several times, and I'm certain I will do it again, but today I, I will not go in that direction. What I believe the writer of Hebrews is talking about here is the danger of being a temporary believer. And the title of my message today is The Danger of Just Sampling Jesus. Of course, we must take into account, once again, to whom the book was written. As you know, it was written to Jews who were under pressure to forsake Christ and return to the old law, or to keep Christ yet obey the old law at the same time. Now, in such a setting, there were probably Jews who by now were solid Christians. There were also probably Jews who were considering becoming Christians, and there were Jews who just played with the idea. They just toyed with the idea of Jesus. They they talked about it, but they never committed. Now, I believe that this chapter is a warning to those who have not committed to Christ, but have toyed with the idea of becoming one of His followers. <clears throat> we could call these people temporary believers or convenient believers. It's great to believe something when it's convenient, isn't it? It's not so great to believe it or partake in it when it's not so convenient. I think about the martyrs around the world who have given all for the name of Jesus. Now this has always been a part of the Christian experience since the very beginning, hasn't it? But there seem to be periods of time when martyrdom is more common than it is. Now because of the news media and how quick we get news and information today, we are made aware almost immediately when there are Christian martyrs. We're seeing this in the news with this horrible ISIS group, which is nothing more than a, 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 a satanic army that's going around in this part of the Middle East butchering people because they refuse to forsake Christ. I think about these martyrs and their lives. I think about how they were once innocent children that were held by a mother, held by a father like the rest of us. I think about how these, these martyrs who are giving their life, who give their lives to Christ for the cause of Christ were once played with other children and went to school and had dreams of the future 
And then at some point in their lives, they repented of their sin and they followed Christ. And they probably had no idea that such a commitment would cost them their lives. I heard an older believer recently say that she doesn't know what she would do if she were at the point of execution unless she verbally denied Christ. And this came from a long-time believer, someone that I consider a strong Christian, and truly none of us know what we would do at that point. But these are people who have counted the cost. These are the people who have faced convenient Christianity and said no. And so they have faced Jesus when it was inconvenient for them. Now, my first point to you today is this. To merely sample Jesus is an insult to Jesus. Look back at the verse that says, those who have tasted. It says those who have tasted the heavenly spirit. Those who have tasted the goodness of the word of God. The image of tasting is just taking a, a sample. Those who've claimed Jesus, excuse me, those who've sampled Jesus but haven't claimed him as Lord and Savior. We got any ice cream lovers here? Oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> probably a blessing in my life is that I cannot eat ice cream very often because it makes me sick. And I say that's a blessing because uh, I really like it. And uh, if it didn't make me sick, I would probably eat a lot of it. I know a woman who was trying to lose weight, and she said that uh, she needed to cut out eating ice cream every day. And I said, well, how much do you eat every day? She said, well, sometimes about half a gallon a day. And I said, well, I think if you cut out your ice cream a little bit, it'd probably bring down your weight and your triglycerides at the same time. But uh, I was reminded of this idea of sampling ice cream when I was in... Mississippi last week, I was with another person. We stopped at an ice cream shop, and I just stood there and watched. I, I actually have gotten to where I can watch people eat ice cream, and it, it, you know, I don't covet. But uh, this particular man said, hey, can I see one of those sample spoons? You know, the little bitty spoons that hold just almost just very little. He, he took the, the spoon, and, uh, or the, the person behind the counter took the spoon, and he said, uh, you know, I think I'd like to try this triple flavor chocolate death something or other. You know how they get come up with these names. And so he, he tasted that and then he said, uh, I, I think I'd, now I'd like to, let's see, what is that? And the worker said, that's the, that's the Raspberry Cherry Express. And he said, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to try that. And so there was a little sample there. And then he said, what, what is this over here? And, uh, the uh, woman behind the counter said, that's the double sweet pistachio. He said, I'd like to try that. And then uh, they said, well, sir, would you like to get some ice cream? And he said, yeah, I'll just take vanilla. You know, but <laughs> anyway, now, <clears throat> I wonder how many people go into shops like that and just sample and never buy anything. My daughter worked at an ice cream shop in Chattanooga. And you, you, I mean, we could have a reality show on customers and quirks around ice cream. But what if the man that I was with had just said, thank you, I've, I've decided I don't want to buy anything. Thanks for the samples. Goodbye. You know, perhaps, uh, perhaps a person might say, you know, that's too expensive. Or, or a person might say, I forgot my money. Or a person might say, uh, I'm just a cheapskate. I just like the free samples. Now let's go back to verse 4. Let's look at the people who sampled. It said, those who have once been enlightened. Listen to me. Imagine this in your mind. Hey, there's the Jesus shop. Let's go in. Let's try some free samples. Hmm, let me try the Holy Spirit. Wow, that tastes good. 
Let me taste the goodness of God's word. Mmm, that's good too. Now, let me sample the future. You know, the scripture says right here, people who have tasted the power of the future. Wow, that's the best yet. But no, I don't want to commit. Thanks for the Jesus samples. Thanks for the Jesus samples. Goodbye. And on their way out, the person says, you know, the reason I did not buy, the reason that I only tried the samples is because I didn't want to pay that high cost. I didn't want to give my life. And the cost is just too high. So goodbye. Look at verse 6. To their loss, they are sacrificing the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. In a manner of speaking, they are leaving Jesus on the cross permanently. Now, next, to merely sample Jesus means that no benefit is gained whatsoever. Look in verse 7. Land that drinks in the rain often falling on it and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed in the end, it will be burned. You know, you know agriculture is used many times in Scripture. Uh, people then understood it, and today we understand it. Maybe those of us without a, a farming background may not understand these as clearly as those of us who do, but we get the general idea. In this example, our understanding is spiritual. The blessings of God are for those who have committed. Rain falls and a healthy crop is produced, but worthless plants are gathered and burned. Listen to me this morning. Those who merely sample Jesus will be gathered and burned like the worthless thorns and thistles. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 21 says this, It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then turned their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. That's a powerful verse. Now back there in verse 9 in chapter 6 of Hebrews, the writer says this, Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. In other words, the writer says, let's quit talking about that and let's move on to another topic. And so my next point is this, is that it's worth the cost for those who have tasted, consumed, and become laborers. The Bible says in verse 10 there, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown Him as you, are, as you have helped His people and continue to help them. We want each of you to know this same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those through faith and patience. Those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. God remembers those who have not fallen by the wayside. God remembers those who love His Son Jesus by loving others. God wants you to keep serving until the very end. He doesn't want you to become lazy or to become weary and well-doing as it says in Galatians 6, 9. But He wants you to stay the course. In Luke chapter 9, verse 62, Jesus said this, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Perhaps you're here today and you've wondered if it will be worth it all. You, you've wondered if all of this is real. And it is true. 
It is true that we hope for a Savior that we have not seen with our own eyes. This Savior that we talk about, we don't even have a photograph of this Savior. We don't even have a drawing of this Savior that was done during that time. We don't have any video footage of this Savior. We have no recordings of His voice. But John chapter 20 verse 29 reassures us, Because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I've asked Terry to illustrate this by singing, It Will Be Worth It All. Of times the day seems long, our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. All tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face will sorrow all erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. and driven on no human help in sight but there is one in heaven who knows our deepest care let Jesus solve your problem just go to him in prayer it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glance of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Do you know this song? Would you sing this chorus with me right on the refrain? It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. Terry and Marilyn, thank you so much for doing that on a short notice. You know, I've talked with a lot of people right before they died. 
I've talked with people as they reviewed their lives in just a few minutes and talked about their joys and their regrets. In every single case, without exception, no one has ever regretted sampling Christ and taking him. No one has ever told me they regretted being a follower of Christ, serving others. No one has ever told me they've regretted being faithful until the very end. And so now here we come to decision time. A time of reflection. A time of confession. A time of decision. I want to ask you this morning, have you been merely sampling Jesus? If so, the Bible's clear what will happen to you. You can quit sampling today and you can partake. God's Spirit is calling you. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, be with us during this invitation time. I pray that this morning someone would come to know Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll stand and have our invitation him. Any decision that needs to be made, we'll be waiting for you. Let's stand together. Jesus is Savior and Lord of my life, my hope, my glory, my 